Well, if you're into Bluetooth low energy, Android apps, and microcontrollers, boy, have I got a deal for you today. Um, take a look at this. Uh, here we have it, the uh, HM10. Um, connected only to a power supply. Yeah, this wire is coming from the uh, I.O. pin. It's uh, terminated here on the breadboard and an LED. Here's the Bluetooth app. I'm going to scan. There's the Bluetooth module, Radnite uh, RSSI minus 34. You can tell it's fairly close. Connecting. Connected. Now, uh, ignore the boost off, boost on stuff. Uh, uh, I'll explain later. LED on, LED off. There we go. LED on, LED off. Well, what do you think? Pretty neat, huh? Um, if you're using the HM10, chances are you're probably doing it wrong. Uh, what I mean by that is you've got the connectivity on BLE to your app, probably using AI too, and then you're going to have to use it as a pass-through vehicle to get through to a microcontroller. Now, isn't that crazy? Two, you probably know the HM10 is built around the CC2541 from Texas Instruments and built inside the 245, what, 2541 is an Intel 8051 microcontroller from the great uh, John Wharton uh, at Intel. Shout out to him. That chip is probably also powering your washing machine, your dishwasher, if you've got them. Uh, anyway, I, th I started, I thought, I, I did the, I, the boost button, let me explain that. The, be, behind every murder is a motive, and behind every video I upload is a motive. The boost button, uh, I, I, I've got a 1000 watt e-bike wheel, and it, very similar to the one I fitted on the video on the screen right now, it, 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 that was a 250 watt. This one is a 250 stroke 1000 watt. How cool is that? You switch between the two modes by connecting those two blue wires uh, together or separating them. And that allows you to have a, a legally compliant e-bike here in Europe, uh, but also uh, you can have a switch uh, which uh, uh, switches it back to 1000 watts. But I didn't want a big uh, Lucas switch on the bike. Um, uh, old Bill might spot that. Uh, old Bill, the nickname for the police here in the UK. Uh, so I thought, well, why not stick a, a little Bluetooth app and control the switch via a MOSFET remotely, blah, blah, blah. Um, so great, I thought I'd do all, all the right things every decent programmer would do, and I went to the, the hub of Gits and tried to steal some code. But, but wouldn't you know it, everywhere I looked, um, everybody was using the HM10 in pass-through mode just using the um, uh, connectivity of the CC2451 and then using this wraparound of a, a serial interface using the AT command set to pass them through to another controller. That's just crazy! Uh, two controllers when you can just get away with one. I mean, perfectly good processing on that, on that board um, without having to go to an Arduino or a Pi or an ESP8266. So, uh, I got confused. Um, Completely ridiculous. Uh, why would why wouldn't anybody? Why would you do that? Um, so I started to look at the, the economics of this and the, the business side of it. And uh, TI provided an integrate. Oh, by the way, look. If you don't want this background, just click below the link. There's a you can download the AIA file for AI2 and start knocking yourself out. All the secrets are in there. But if you want to know a bit more about the HM10, the pitfalls you'll have. You, 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 you should stick with this, this video, or save it, or, or like it even better, and it'll save it in your like, like uh, folders on, on YouTube. Um, so, um, back to TI, Texas Instruments. Their IDE costs thousands of dollars. Uh, have they never heard of razors and razor blades? I mean, for goodness sake, look at, look at Arduino, look at um, Nordic RF. The, the, the tools they provide, fantastic just for the everyday maker, but not TI. So along comes Wow Mao, this company you can see on the screen right now, and they put this little wrap around, uh, make it easy for people to use just the connectivity feature of the CC2541, uh, and then use another microcontroller backwards and forwards between the app through this gateway uh, to, to make it possible to use this chip 
on a board without spending this license fee. Now, <laughs> pause for a while for the uh, irony of the righteous indignation of Wow Mao getting all uh, worked up about uh, people stealing their intellectual property. A Chinese company moaning about copyright. Uh, that that's just, just takes the biscuit. Um, they're angry about clones such as the 8009. You'll have seen that one. Um, there's a box of them there. Uh, the, these, these are people who have taken the design, which is frankly Intel and TIs anyway, with just a bit of Mickey Mouse circuitry on the front end, uh, and have copied this. And because uh, wow, Mao uh, made their firmware and the flashing tool available on the website. They also took that as well and then started taking the firmware off of Wow Mao and flashing these clone modules. Anyway, Wow Mao did two things. The first thing they did was they crippled their firmware flashing tool to uh, only uh, work with their genuine mo modules. A bit like the old FTDI debacle, except they're not disabling the modules. Uh, shameful behaviour by FT. DI, that company. Anyway, uh, back, back to Wow Mao. The second thing they did was a good thing. From version 6.03 onwards, uh, they exposed the I.O. pins uh, via the AT command set. So, a couple of takeaways from that. Before you start trying to do this on a, on a clone mod, it won't work. It won't work. You need 6.03 and you can't flash unless you've got your own flashing tool, which you could do, but if you want to make this simple, and I'm trying to keep things simple here, this is, uh, this is Occam's razor stuff here, getting rid of a, an extra micro microcontroller. If you want this to work, you've got to use an HM10 module, and it's got to be 6.03. Martin Curry's website, go to that if you need help in flashing the, uh, the um, HM10 with the latest firmware. If you've got one with the firmware below 6.03, great site. Can't recommend him highly enough. Anyway, what you then need to do is, uh, well, you've got to come around here. Right, sorry about the uh, microphone. I'm a bit closer to the microphone now, so the uh, volume levels will have changed. All you need to do is solder a wire to the fourth pin uh, from the left when the module is in this orientation. Uh, that is IO pin. IO2, that's the one we're using. Now, I've, I've wired in a bunch of other pins there. Some of these pins are, are read-write, some of them are write-only, and some of them can support PWM. How cool is that? So that's all you need to do. You need to strip off that, uh, that shrink that's wrapped around it, and then I've plugged the uh, pin into the uh, breadboard over there, here, so that um, we've got some visible manifestation of the pin going on. Now, all these pins I'm playing with at the moment, I've got other things to do with them, um, but that, that's probably for a later video. But that's all you need to do on the hardware side. Great! So, uh, now, that, that's the, uh, the hardware and the firmware side of things taken care of. Uh, we're now going to switch um, to the AI2 stuff, the uh, MIT AI2, and produce a little app. Well, here's the uh, Here's the design of you, and let me first of all say that the first uh, three elements here, these uh, scan and connect buttons and disconnect buttons at the top, the status uh, label and the list area, all taken, uh, lifted 100% from the good folks at MIT AI2 Labs who provide a template for connecting to BLE devices. So the only thing you're interested in is this button here, the boost button. Ignore the radonite battery button, this is for the this is for e-bike batteries, it's a commercial application uh, I'm writing uh, uh, and I put a link into the, the battery business. Uh, we're only interested in the boost button. Now, if, as I say, if you're familiar with AI2, AI, AI2 please just download the file uh, and, 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 uh, and use it. I don't need any attribution, just, you know, just, just go ahead and use it. If you need to know a little bit about the AI2, how it works, we're only really interested in the boost button. So let's go through over to the blocks. Now, first thing to say is uh, there are manufacturer-specific characteristics that we need. Now, if you take a look at this uh, screen grab from BLE Scanner, it shows that these characteristics are uh, both uh, able to be re read from and, and written to. So I just uh, cut and pasted them into global variables at the top here. Uh, those are the ones we'll use to write the AT commands to the um, uh, to, to the HM10. Now the next uh, module, the next module, all lifted from that PDF that was on the screen a short while ago, link at the bottom of the screen, and I'll put it on the website as well. All the stuff that I link to I tend to put on the website in case those links expire. Um, again, 
connected all all straight from the AI2 labs and here's the boost button now uh, a couple of things to point out here uh, I call the button boost so when boost is clicked uh, is the text equal to boost off in other words boost is off uh, then uh, write ATPIO21 uh, and that what that means is IO pin 2 1 means on now the important thing it took me a while to figure out here is it's got to be BLE um, write bytes, write strings and write whatever else, I tried everything, nothing worked, it write bytes uh, did, did the business for me. So it writes out 2-1 which switches that port on, turns the LED on, change the background colour to green, change the text to on. If it isn't equal to boost off I just assume it's uh, uh, boost on and therefore I have to switch it off again. Bluetooth LE, uh, write bytes, PIO 2-0. Uh, in this instance, so uh, IO pin 2, 0, off, and change set to boost off, change background colour to uh, grey. Um, one thing I'll point out, if, you, if you're watching this part of the video, my guess is you're, you're probably relatively new to AI2, uh, it took me a while to figure out the if-then-else uh, call. The logic control here is only if-then, there isn't an if-then-else, so you drag this over, and then you think, oh, well, there's a little icon there, I'll click on that, and then, oh, it's got an else, okay, so what do I do with the else? I drag it over here, no, do I drag it over here, no. Uh, where do I put this? Well, you actually have to drag it over to here. Oh, it's just tedious. Why don't you just have a separate entity? And there you go, you've got your if then else. So if you get stuck on that, oh, hey, oh, two guys, you're probably laughing at me, but it took me a while to figure that out. And then uh, I did a build, uh, created an APK uh, there. Uh, then I uh, sent the APK to my PC, I did uh, to my phone. I did it via email. I can't use uh, Gmail, they don't like APKs being sent around, they're just such fascists. Um, so I used uh, gmx.com and uh, downloaded it and installed it and hey presto, you got what you saw. Well that's it, you've, you've kind of got everything now, you've got how to wire in the connection to the IO pin, you know how to flash the firmware, help some Martin Curry's website, um, you know the do's and don'ts on the clone wars front and uh, you've also got the AIA, AIA source for uh, your own app uh, and do with it what you will. I don't need any accreditation, just use it as you wish. Um, if you found the video useful, even if you didn't find the video useful, it helps keep the channel going, you hit the like button. All the best, cheers.